Welcome back. So one of the things I wanted to do with respect to the elevators here was replace um, the actual push rods there that connect to the elevators um, from the bell cranks with um, steel. So that's what I'm doing here. Basically up at Brits here using the cold saw to cut through some half inch uh, solid steel rod. And then I'll be drilling the ends of those and tapping them and then I can replace the aluminum ones. I just want those rods just to be stronger um, because now I'm balancing the elevator system from the inside I just need the connections to be able to handle more load so there you can see cut both of those They're about uh, seven and a quarter inches long and just using the belt sander there just to take the sharp edge off there after cutting those and before putting them on the lathe and uh, drilling and tapping them and another job I had to do was cut the two pieces of lead for the elevator uh, counterweights. So I'm starting out just cutting them three and a half inches square and that gives me about two and a half pounds for each piece. Uh, so for a total of five pounds. And actually should have changed out the blade on the bandsaw there because just using the one with the real fine teeth and that just kind of gets clogged up uh, when cutting lead. It's actually better to cut with a much larger tooth. Uh, blade but anyway didn't change that out so took a little bit longer than expected uh, but you know wasn't that many cuts really it doesn't it doesn't hurt the blade it just means it sort of gets a little bit clogged up uh, just because of how soft the lead is so just takes longer to do it that way but anyway uh, seeing that I only had a couple of pieces to cut out here it wasn't really a big deal and as you can see so, um, and I fully intended to have to cut these down as well because I, I knew that this would be too much weight, but at least, you know, a good starting point. And one of the other things I want to do here is uh, change out the trim spring because I've, I've got that coiled spring right now. So I bought some of this uh, spring steel from McMaster and just kind of guesstimated, um, you know, what thickness and width and stuff to use. And... Um, it's really tough, um, difficult to cut, and even more difficult to drill through. So here I'm just using the little cutoff wheel um, to cut off a section of that about 10 inches long. And then uh, later on I'll have to drill some holes in it so I can actually mount it uh, in place of where I currently have that coiled spring. Alright, so now I'm onto the lathe, and these are those uh, the elevator um, connection rods there, push rods. Um, so starting out with a centering drill bit there and uh, you can see just lock that into place there and then just sort of wind this in just to get the centering hole started there that's you know good way of doing it rather than just putting the drill bit in there because sometimes a drill bit can walk to one side if it's uh hits you know sort of a groove or something like that in the end of the rod so I've got two of those to do in um, both sides of that so basically save me changing out the bit every time um, I think it's almost quicker just to do all four of them um, you know with the centering drill bit first and then change up to doing all four of them with the drill bit as I'm doing here and then lastly uh, go ahead and and uh, put the tap in there so these are um, a half inch thick rods and I'm drilling them out with a 0.159 drill bit and then tapping them with a 1032 um, which is a fine thread drill bit. So it accepts a, um, the AN3 thread that's on the, the rod ends that I have there uh, that are gonna be put on the ends of these. And you know, already exist on the aluminum ones. So yeah, just you've seen this before, but you know, for someone who's not watching all the videos, that's how we do it. And so now moving on to um, why, um, and for the title of this video, why I need to overbalance um, the elevator. So. If you look at how the elevator is hinged here, it's hinged down low and it's basically, the problem is all of the, um, or the center of um, mass of the elevator is above the hinge point. So when you're moving it, the center of mass is always higher than the hinge point. So its tendency is to be unstable. In other words, it, it, the center of mass always wants to move down and try and get below the hinge point. Um, so when the elevator is down like this, um, and when the elevator is up like this, it's once it gets over the center, once the center of mass crosses over where the hinge point is, it wants to continue going 
in whichever direction um, it's already in, in terms of where the center of mass is. So when it's here, it wants to keep going that way. And when it comes back to the other side, um, in the elevator down position, it wants to keep going that way as well. So the only way to safely balance this is to force it to always go to the um, nose down position or elevator full up. And in order to do that, I've got to put enough balance and mass out front of it. Uh, so when it is even all the way down, so in the, in the you know, nose pitch up position, there's enough mass out front um, to want to pull that elevator all the way back up and have the center of mass cross over or you know always be actually in front of the pivot point so um, if I was trying to balance it normally I'd have to put the center of mass below this hinge point here and it's just not possible I'd have to have this massive counterweight that was literally hanging below the hinge point and first of all it would look ridiculous and secondly it, it would have to be so heavy in order to be able to you know, lift off, off the, um, the whole weight of that elevator and have it properly balanced. So instead, as you've seen before, I'm going to um, counterweight the whole thing by the linkages and just make it so it doesn't matter which position it's in, the center of mass of the whole thing, when you include the counterweight, is always ahead of the hinge point. Uh, that way it's always going to want to um, just basically pull to the full up position. Um, and then you know it'll be safe that way. So if you hit a bump and that it's not the elevator is not going to want to go down and, and actually increase uh, the nose up attitude. Um, it's going to be kind of the other way. So if you hit a bump, the elevator is going to want to go up, which is nose um, down attitude, and which is safest because it'll unload the aircraft or unload the foil. And so the next step is to paint these little push rods there that I did up at Brits. Um, just with a rattle can so I'm just using a regular spray can that's you know primer and paint in one and putting about sort of three coats on there just to protect those because they just steel and uh, if they don't have anything protecting them they're gonna rust and you know ultimately I need to do the same thing on the elevator um, bell crank uh, sorry the elevator balance rod now which is the bell, bell crank that Brits welded on for me, but I wanted to mock all that into place first and make sure that everything was working and we've got the right balance and everything. So here I've actually had him to put another cut in there as well and, and welded that up there, so another angle there. And the goal of the, or the purpose of that was to first of all move the weights uh, inside the nose because they were going to stick out otherwise, and also to get the weight as far down and as close in possible to the pivot point as I can when it's in the down position. That way it's not putting as much um, force on the thing, on the whole setup when it's down, but it's putting more force on it when it's up. Um, just because of, you know, the position relative to the hinge point. So I needed to check and make sure this was fitting inside the nose. So I just put my camera in there real quick and uh, close the lid on the uh, nose compartment there and just ran the light around there just to see that I had enough clearance as you'll see here and there was so uh, yeah I had I think it was a good quarter an inch or more of clearance there as you can see so that'll do the trick and then on the bottom side there I also had to do some clearance but you'll see that in a minute so here's that trim spring this is one that I had and it really wasn't that um, providing that much force now this um, steel this uh, spring steel has actually got a lot more resistance to it um, and it's more much more linear so drilling holes in this yeah so I've got the first two holes drilled there and it was quite a process um, it's just super strong this stuff just even just trying to get the drill bit just to break the um, the first part of the skin of it before it starts actually drilling the hole was tricky um, but you know I just basically counter punched it and then uh, um, you know use the centering drill to start out and then ultimately just went through you know every drill bit that I had stepping through from 1 16th of an inch all the way up to 3 16th of an inch um, as you'll see here if you watch you know when you put the countering drill bit on there so this is the third hole that I'm drilling now nothing really happens <laughs> it's just and Brit warned me about this Brit said oh yeah drilling that stuff is no fun at all um, so it took me a while just to drill three holes and then I think almost um, 40 minutes to drill three holes 
and you know I'm using um, the tap magic on there as well um, the worst thing or the best thing I want to do is make sure I didn't get the steel too hot because then it would be impossible to drill it um, so I just took it real slow and as I said got a little bit of a hole started out here and then uh, switched to a 1 16th inch bit and there you can see I've got my little hole started there I think I've got it to about an eighth there and I just slowly stepped through all the different bits that I have in my kit and I had a brand new kit here so brand new drill bits um, which was helpful to step through those and uh, ultimately got that bolted on and because of how strong that is I think one bolt up the top there for that bracket is all that needs I don't think it needs the two on there and as you can see I've got that fitted there now and uh, it's providing um, the resistance that it needs to in other words to keep the elevator where it needs to but at the same time um, it's just enough spring force there that I can override it all the way um, by hand so if it's at the all the way nose down position I can pull it to all the way nose up um, and it just sort of flexes to that point and uh, vice versa so that's kind of ideal of what I was looking for and it turns out that the 50 thou thickness that I got was just about right and I've got it mounted at about I think it's about eight or nine inches up from where it pivots so um, that's definitely way better than it was with that just regular coil spring and the trim function is now working as it should and with the counterweight on there pretty much doesn't really take any any real effort to to sort of move it you don't feel the weight of the elevator because the counterweight is now um, you know pulling it sort of into the up neutral position and the trim spring there is acting not only as a trim but also is going to act like a bit of a damper as well so I'm feeling pretty good about how the elevator setup is now and uh, the next thing I have to do is basically disassemble that the front bracket there and just get that painted before I do my final um, bolting everything up and getting it all um, you know finally fitted into place but as you can see there and going through the different um, parts of the trim set up there and and uh, trim is working the way I want it and uh, here you can see I've, I've adjusted those weights as well I cut them down a little bit cut off about an inch there so they're two and a half inches wide and three and a half inches tall and that gives me a total of about three and a half pounds and that balances it nicely so it always pulls it to the all the nose up position but with the elevator trim spring there it can hold it where it needs to be without too much effort so I think it's a good solution now it's going to be safe and uh, once I get it all tested together I'll be doing some nose drops where I lift the nose of the aircraft up and then uh, you know drop it and then see what the elevator does basically what it should do is either a hold position or if anything go to a full up position and lastly there's as I said I just disassembled everything there so the two weights and then the bracket and um, got that painted up got a few coats on there let that dry and um, next thing I can do is uh, get that fully assembled and then that's that job done so that's the update for this week thanks again for watching and tune in again next week and uh, see what I have for you